This is Crystal Fenn with MedPage Today. I'm here in San Antonio at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, where researchers reported controversial data that anthracycline-based chemotherapy does not produce better outcomes with trastuzumab. Dr. Dennis Sleeman of the University of California, Los Angeles, explained the implications of these findings at a press conference here. I think the field is slowly changing, moving from the anthracycline-based regimens to the non-anthracycline-based regimens. I don't want to even begin to pretend that it's our data alone that's driving that. Dr. Steve Jones from U.S. Oncology has done a beautiful study looking at AC versus TC, where well, there's no anthracycline. And interestingly enough, it was Steve who introduced anthracyclines way back in the 70s. Um, and what he said is correct. What we do as oncologists generally is when a new drug comes in, we simply add things to establish regimen. So when the tax taxanes came in, we added it to AC. What he said was, what if he took something away? So he took away the A and looked at AC versus TC and found that the outcome data were actually better in the TC arm. Uh, and again, that's consistent with the story that if you don't have that HER2 population included in the study, which a significant number of his were not, then you don't get this incremental benefit that the overview shows of about 4% because you lose that group that has that huge benefit that sort of gives the illusion that the entire group is benefiting by four to five percent. So it's, it's further rational targeting and personalization of therapy based on molecular biology. The researchers found that women in the trial often overexpressed a gene called TOPO2 in addition to being HER2 positive. Women with TOPO2 co-amplification didn't appear to get any extra benefit from therapy that included trastuzumab. But because of its lower side effect profile, Sleman suggested that these women should get it too. There has been considerable controversy um, uh, in the field with uh, many key opinion leaders uh, feeling that we haven't proven that, that the case has been made. Now I will tell you there are 10,000 patients worth of data, almost as much as in the Oxford overview, that shows that the incremental benefit given by anthracyclines is restricted to the HER2 positive population. That if you take them out and compare a non anthracycline regimen to an anthracycline regimen, you see virtually no difference in outcome, but you do see the toxicity. We now think we know why that HER2 group has that superiority, because about a third of the time it's carrying this target, a second target that the anthracycline hits. That's why in the ACT alone arm, you can get that effect. The only place to look for us that would rationally make sense to use an anthracycline-based regimen is in those women who are HER2 and TOPO2 co-amplified who can't receive trastuzumab or receptin. Then it makes all the sense in the world to give that woman an anthracycline-based regimen. And the magnitude of that benefit is going to far outweigh the smaller incidence of CHF and leukemia. But whenever it's only a, uh, the small percent and you have those leukemias and CHFs occurring, then we don't believe that magnitude uh, makes it worth it. So trastuzumab with non-anthracycline-based chemotherapy appeared to reduce side effects without impairing outcomes. And the TOPO2 analysis suggested a way to better refine therapy. Here at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, I'm Crystal Fend. MedPage Today.